I had been so hungry for God or whatever you want to call it in a way that I couldn't have ever even articulated. I mean, it's like that desire I think is in some ways within us. And I had done a really good job denying that, but my path has been, you know, I'm Paul Selig, and this is your superior self. Paul, <clears throat> thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule. Um, I know you're busy uh, with another book, and you're promoting the kingdom, which I love, by the way. Thank you so much for taking the time, my friend. Thank you for having me. So uh, this book, I, I guess that's the 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 way that the the guides have set it up for everyone is kind of like, I don't know, maybe it was different for you than for everyone else, I don't know. For me, it was, I had to read like majority of your books before this one kind of knocked it out of the park for me. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is for, I think last time we talked about um, the Christ, the resurrection of the Christ was like the rolling of the rock coming out of your heart, that kind of thing. And then like, I, I still kind of um, externalized the Christ from myself, right? Like I just, I still couldn't understand that concept between this book I'm reading it and you, I wish I had a camera on me. Like I, I remember sitting in, in, <laughs> in the other study and I'm reading it and like, I don't know, I can't remember what the phrase was, but this realization that I'm not separate from that, like that Jesus and I are one that I am. So I am with the source of creation. Like I am that right that in, inside of us. Mm -hmm. You should have seen my fit. Like I, I picked, I, and I don't know if it was like the goal of the guides to like kind of baby step me through these books, because I, I would read the the, the monad or the, or whatever they they term it, but I just never got that concept until this book. Is that what? Do you think that was the way it was drawn up, or like they meant for that to happen? Well, I the books, the books are in. I think they're all energetic transmissions, and I think the transmissions build so that the reader can hold them. You know, the guides have said, if we took you too quickly into a too bright room, you'd go blind. So they bring it to us as we can hold it. And they've been teaching since the very first book, which was called I Am The Word, this idea of the manifestation of the monad. They call the monad, it's the divine spark. Sometimes they call it the Christ or the true self. It's all the same thing. I think there's probably a a word or a name for it in every religious system of some kind. So I think you're getting it. It's what it sounds like. And it sounds like you're getting it when it was time to get it. You know, they talk about Jesus some in the books, but they talk about the Christ as the divine spark that was realized, they say, by Jesus and others. You know, it's, it's the word. It's, and they say that the word is the energy of the creator in action. And that we really can't be separate from it, but we believe ourselves to be. And what they're doing in all of these books is sort of bringing us home. I think that's the easiest way to say it. Sure. You seem very, like, you just seem, like, in a good spot right now. Like, you just, to me, like, I know we've we've had, like, three episodes, or this is yeah. our third episode, but I, I've, I feel an energy of you that is just very calm and, like, very, I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but you feel yeah. in a good spot. Yeah, I am, you know, and uh, I think in some ways I'm having an experience of the teachings in my life, which is how they say this stuff happens, you know, that your life is your teacher, your life is your classroom. And um, I feel really fortunate and everything that's happened in my life, really in the last almost year and a half has been stuff that I wouldn't have expected to happen. Mm -hmm. And I'm really grateful for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm, um, but yeah, thank you for noticing. I am in a good space. I'm happy to be here. I too. Um, so in the kingdom, like, can you talk about that with the, with the listeners? Like, so once you real make this realization for yourself, right? Like, I know for me, it's kind of hard because now what do you do with it? Right. Like the, I think the kingdom is kind of like 
you know, helping you along with that realization and, and then saying, all right, well, now that you have this realization, this awareness, nothing changes, right? Like you just kind of, you re-see things for what it, they, what it is, right? Is that, is that about right? I think it's bigger than that. Yeah. I think um, the guide's definition of the kingdom is the realization of the inherent divine in all manifestation. They say you can't make anything holy, but you can deny the divinity in everything and anything. And for the most part, we have and we do. So it seems to me from what they teach is that they're bringing us almost into the, the first room. You know, the kingdom, they say, is a level of Christ consciousness. They describe it as the level, the highest level of vibration that we can hold while maintaining form, mm. while we have a body. But I also understand that it's an octave. So they say our reality that we share here is, is an octave, low notes and high notes. And that the whole purpose of these books is almost to transpose the tone, the music, the vibration that we are to play in the next octave up, which is what they call the upper room. So is everything the same and different? Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. But is it the end? No. I mean, what happens at this level of, of, of realization, I think is quite different. They say you become the doorway to between the two realities in a lot of ways when you're aligning at the level of the kingdom or that level of consciousness your very presence is impacting you know the reality that you've known and in fact lifting it they say everything operates in vibrational accord and they'll often say a c c o r d or a c h o r d is on a piano and the tone or the song or the vibration from the upper room, they say, claims the inherent divine in what it encounters. It's basic entrainment, you know, like attracts like. So in some ways, you become a transformer of reality through this level of alignment. Hmm. Yeah, because I've asked you before about like the law of attraction, like mm -hmm. what you have this awareness, right? Like you have this awareness of greatness that, that is inside of you. It's like, why, why suffer still, right? Like why, why still be subject to the small self, the ego and like, listen to the, the echoes that, it, that are in your, in your brain and thinking that you're lesser than anything than greatness. But it's like, you're in this reality that can be very dense, right? And you can, you can definitely um, like get caught up and forget this stuff, right? Like you, let's say you're having a bad day and like, you know, yes, yes. I'm aware that how, you know, how great we really are, but because mm -hmm. of the stress, because of the, the everyday nuances, like you, you forget moment to moment, right? Like, yeah. and they talk about this in this book and it's like, but what, how does Paul sell it? I mean, I know no one's perfect, right. As far as like living continuously in the moment of that greatness, but like, are you with the higher, like reaching the higher octaves? Are you finding those moments you're staying in those moments longer. Does that make sense? Yeah, I guess so. You know, I'm not going to say no. You know, my default position, my whole life has been worry. You know, I was a worried kid. I was a worried grown up. It's kind of where I know myself and what my comfort zone is. It's harder for me and more challenging for me to, to be joyful. And I'm finding myself joyful, happy, you know, all of these things, which is, strikes me as, as kind of miraculous and somewhat odd because I'm so more comfortable than the other, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a big shift. The guides have said to me, you know, yeah, I've done the work. I just don't know it yet, you know? Like the work's been done on an energetic level and I still have to integrate it. And maybe that's so. I hope that's so. I mean, they haven't really led me wrong with this work yet. But um, I'm having a different experience. They just finished dictating their 10th book. That was a six-week process. It was all done in front of people. And, um, you know, what they're talking about in that book is really having a foundation in what they call the upper room so that it becomes the norm. It's not this sort of exotic experience of peace. But then they talk about what happens in the upper room is really 
finally uh, an agreement towards this idea of union, you know, of not really being separate from the person beside you or the source of all things, because they say there is one note emanating in the entire universe, and they call that the word or the creator, whatever you want to call it, that's in manifestation as all things. And the realization of that, that that's within you, and then it must be, if it's in with you, it must be within me or everybody, including the guy you can't stand or those people over there that make you crazy. And that's where the challenge really is, but where the real change is. You know, we've been operating with this kind of odd tribalism, you know, where everything is born in separation. And um, the guides have said, you know, we believed ourselves to be so separate from the ones beside us that we claim separation from source. And you really don't get to have them both ways. Mm. You know, you really can't. The guides say what you damn, who you damn, damns you back, which means that's just law of attraction, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. When did you like for you and your journey, like when did you start realizing that, like that we are one with God? Like, was it, I mean, you, you've been doing this for a while now, but was there yeah. a certain point where you had that realization? No, I mean, it's not about my realization. I think it's about, I'm a channel. I'm not a spiritual teacher. I'm not a guru. I don't want to be those things. I can interpret the guide's work when I'm asked, which is what I'll do in an interview like this but I'm not the teacher, so I'm a student of the work. So I've had experiences of union, a few of them in my life, which have been beautiful and shocking in some ways. Um, but no, there wasn't a moment when I went, wow, I'm one with everybody, how great that is. It's more like, oh my God, I'm one with everybody. This is fucked up. <laughs> what, was that? what does that mean? You know, what are the implications <laughs> of that? And I mean, there are things that are, are taught in, in religions, you know, uh, that I wouldn't have understood without some of these teachings, you know, this idea that, you know, what you do to another, you do to yourself. I mean, all of those things are, are basically this teaching of union, you mm -hmm. know, and um, I can't say any of it's convenient or convenient to me. I do know that I'm having a life now that I didn't know that I could have. Mm. And I'm enormously grateful for it. And I actually do credit God or the guides or whatever you want to call it for helping this to happen because I wouldn't have chosen it because I wouldn't have known that I could. You know, the best, the best life I thought I would get would be a better apartment in New York, you know, and, you know, I don't know, uh, stay healthy or, you know, I mean, listen, it, you know, and I've really been given a whole other life. Yeah. And I'm really aware of it. So I'm not taking it for granted. That's beautiful, man. I love that. Um, how is living in Maui, like, helped you energetically like is it helping you like connect more with consciousness like with the guides is it like a more clear connection how is it like because I, I feel like maui has just this this feeling to it or this energetic like level that is just out of this world like how has it helped you well i the whole thing the whole experience has helped me so i didn't plan on coming here i was in costa rica doing a workshop when New York City shut down last March and I didn't know where to go because I couldn't go back home. And I ended up here because a friend found me a place to stay. And then I just stayed. I never went home. You know, I never went back to the city. It's crazy. But my feeling when I got here was such a sense of peace that I hadn't known before. And also a sense of being cared for and welcomed and by the place, by the whole experience. It was really something I hadn't known, you know, and, um, and I was really gifted with community, you know, and people that I met that have been, you know, kind and loving and caring and welcoming. And so, you know, everything that sort of happened has been showing me in some ways what the guides teach, you know, how we can be, you know, how I can be. And so I find myself much less 
self-absorbed, much less selfish. I, it just doesn't, a lot of things just don't occur to me. And do I still have problems? Yeah. Do I still complain a lot? Yeah. You know, but so I think I credit Maui a lot. I feel fortunate to have met the people that I met here and none of that felt accidental. It's all been sort of strange. I, I ended up finding or they found me or I don't know how it happened the the sad song that was there for Ramdas mm. um, on the island and you know and that was remarkable and continues to be remarkable um, to meet people that are really walking a walk that I admire um, so I don't know I'm now yeah I mean there's a lot of woo-woo on Maui you know I'm not a woo-woo person I'm not a very good new ager. I'm too old to be a hippie. I'm actually too young to be a, a hippie from the first time around. I'm too old to be a second generation hippie. But um, but it's but it's good people. What can I say? Uh, that's awesome, man. No, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm happy for you. I mean, I just I feel like, um, <clears throat> you know, in these incarnations, right? Like, I I struggle. I I struggled early on in my in my journey just trying to find the answers right like i just feel like you're 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 holding too firm on the rope you're, you're trying to figure everything out you have yeah. these goals the ego is saying you need to figure this out mm -hmm. and the more that like the help of your book the kingdom and a, a couple of other um other books as well to uh, i don't know if you know his name michael j rhodes uh i just picked up one of his books i'm, I'm letting go a lot more and just allowing the flow of life to come to, to come to me more right like it's not now it's not an end goal of i want to get enlightened you know i'm going to go and try to be this enlightened person and blah 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 now it's more or less like i'm just trying to enjoy what's around me you know like and allow life to come to me i don't you know the the, the external goals are just starting to fade away a little bit more you know like yeah. I'm just finding peace in a lot of the everyday moments that before I wasn't finding, I was more yeah. too worried about what I was doing to get ahead. I don't, I don't know if like you still like, I mean, I just feel, I could just tell difference in you right now. So I feel like we're on the same wavelength, but I think a lot of people, um, they struggle early on in spirituality as far as like trying to reach up, you know, that enlightenment and, mm -hmm. and, and they're trying to search out gurus and sub, you know, sub subscribe to things. And, and, and they want this quick hack of how do yeah. you get Nirvana? And, and I don't think that's it. I don't either. I don't think it works that way. You know, it's um, some of that's the cultural moment that we're in. I think it may have always been that way. Um, and I just didn't know it. But, you know, when I look back on my own path and I started opening up spiritually when I was 25 um, and then psychically, it all was sort of happening around the same time. But, you know, I've been raised an atheist and I didn't know what to make of all this. And I'm a gay guy and I was disenfranchised by religion and I didn't care, you know, about the organized stuff. But I... I had been so hungry for God or whatever you want to call it in a way that I couldn't have ever even articulated. I mean, it's like that desire I think is in some ways within us. And I had done a really good job denying that, but my path has been, you know, had all the same detours and bumps. I've just been on it a while and I don't, consider myself enlightened and I don't know that I will be and I don't even know that I would say that that's a goal my desire now is for peace and to be at peace and to share that you know I enjoy that I get to show up for this weird stuff that comes through me I hope that people are held by it um, but I can't really have another agenda beyond it. You know, I'm, it's funny, uh, but I, I'll say this when I was, I don't know, maybe 32, 33, I'd been, had enough experience, you know, that there was really something going on, that there was more than just the body. And, um, I was taking this, uh, workshop with this woman who I studied healing with, who's no longer with us. And she said in this workshop, okay, everybody ask for one thing. You're going to get it. I'm going to give you this prayer. It works and write it down. Be careful how you write it down, you know, because you're going to get it. 
And I don't know, maybe I just trusted her so much, but I did. I went, I thought, and I read, read, read. and, you know, I used to think, God, I just should have asked for a nice place to live and a life partner and been easy. <laughs> but I was like, no, I was like, I want to go all the way with this, whatever this spirit stuff is. I want to go all the way. And it was very earnest. I was an earnest request. Because it's almost like once you have a sense that this is real, other things just start to kind of feel stupid. And that's where I was. And I, then I had, an awful, I had an awful few years, you know. And when I was channeling, a, about a, two, maybe three years ago, I was with, with somebody who asked questions of my guides for me. And Paul, we're going to ask some questions for you because I can't really channel for myself unless somebody's act, you know, acting as the active listener. And the guide said to her, oh, yeah, Paul, your job is to hold the door open for other people. And I'm like, what? And she was like, what? We were both like, that sucks. That's not fair. <laughs> but when I thought about it, and then at the end of, um, I guess it was the Book of Freedom, they said to the reader, we're holding the door open and everybody gets to come through. Everybody. And then they said, you, Paul, you get to come through now, too. And I was floored by that. They said, you get to come. And what I realized the books were, were the door. I'm holding the door. That's the, the doorways are the books. That's my job is to be the, you know, to be in that role for this. But I'm glad I get to come too. And that I don't get to just sit there and complain that I'm not, you know, having this high experience. But I don't know. And I, you know, and maybe there are, my experience has been people who run around saying that they're enlightened aren't. You know, it's just like, if you got this stuff, you're probably pretty quiet about it. Sure. Um, there's no need, you, 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 you know, you know it. So you don't have to shout it from the rooftops. Yeah. What is it? Like, I don't know, just saying or something. If somebody, if you see Buddha on the street and they, or something like if they say they're the Buddha, oh. then you shoot him or something, kill him because he's not okay. the Buddha. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I just, I'm finding it like, I'm, I'm loving myself more and like, not like really like not oh i love myself like emotionally but like really loving myself and like trusting my higher self that it's going to take me to where i need to go like i'm i'm letting go of the wheel finally like i yeah. it's taken me so long to do that because i always felt like if i wasn't in control shit wasn't going to get done you know yeah. or or it wasn't going to get done right yeah. how old are you now Trey can i ask 38 oh my you see you're you're very young <laughs> But that be, when, you, when you're, you don't think that you're young, right? Like you just, you feel yeah, like I'm like getting. When old. I was 38, it was I was like over the hill, and I'm pushing 60 now, so I am old. But you look great. Uh, that's kind of you, you yeah. know. And I, you know, but I, I, you know, I, I get it too. I mean, I, I didn't, I don't the, I, the concept of self love used to just throw me completely. You know, and there are ways that I am not loving to myself. I don't care for my body as I should. And, you know, I just have tantrums about, you know, having to take care of myself. But other ways I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm being full of more care for me, you know, in my life in a way that I didn't quite get. So I don't know. I think you're, you're probably way ahead of the game. What do you think? There's I think game. it's because of the books, though, right? Like, I feel like it's the books. It's the... Maybe it's the collective consciousness. Maybe it is because I don't. I don't even know. Like I'm being honest with you. Like people tell me a lot of the time. Like I, the people that I read that keep talking about this fifth dimension. I'm like, you know, I don't even know what that is. Like I don't, you know, like they keep saying we're this three dimensional being, and then the, you know, in 4D, 5D, and I'm like, I don't know what that means. I just know that I feel great when I read this material and I vibrate differently. And then maybe there is some type of collective shift in consciousness and vibration, and it's allowing for people to reach this awareness quicker. I don't know. Well, I hear that's true. I mean, the guides, I don't think my guides have ever talked about 5D and, you know, but they talk about the upper room and they say it's a dimensional reality and maybe that's the same thing and they're just using their own language. Um, and so I don't concern myself with that. I, I used to think, that it was sort of about getting stuff or figuring stuff out or 
And what I'm beginning to understand that it's about being in a place of reception, you know, and knowing that you're worthy to receive, but also sort of having to say maybe that if there is a God or something like a God or whatever you want to call God, maybe it knows what I need, you know, before I can even articulate it. I mean, I'm living a life now that, I, you know, I had an outline kind of of what I wanted when some of those things I got, you know, I wanted to live someplace retreat-like and beautiful and, you know, and I'm, I have that right now, but it all happened in ways beyond me. And I'm not that special. I think the only difference was I had my reality, which was New York, sort of pull the rug was pulled out from under me. And, you know, my expectations of what I was going to do for the next year, which was touring. I didn't go anywhere. You know, I moved to online work. And um, I don't know, but I, I, I do think it's about allowance much more than I used to. And not about getting it right, because I don't know what right is half the time. My idea of right would be based on what somebody else has told me or what I think I should do or be. You know, I still think I should be, you know, 50 pounds lighter and I should be partnered to somebody great. And maybe those things will happen. But you know what? I'm good mm. regardless, you know, is, and that's, an, that's a funny thing for me to say because it's not my normal I mean, I'm talking too much about, about my experience here, but I, I just really want to confirm your own, you know, and if it yeah, is, the, I, it's great. Yeah, but I, I love hearing your experience though, right? Because it's like Paul Selleck that a lot of us don't get to see. Well, you know, I, I read the books, right? And it's about the channeling and the, and the message, but we don't know what, you know, what is the student Paul Selleck going through? You know what I mean? Like what's behind the scenes? Well, there's been a lot of pain, you know, it's not been my growth and my spiritual path has not been particularly easy. Um, I don't know if I just made it hard, which is probably likely because I thought it was supposed to be, but it was and, and often is and probably will be again. And I don't know that it's about getting what you want when you want it and being happy all the time. You know, the most growth I've been through has been through the, the greatest challenge. I don't want to have to repeat those challenges. I expect more will come because that's part of being alive. But the guides say this is school. We're here to learn. And our, our curriculum is our life. And how we choose is up to us. And if we're choosing in fear, we're going to get more of the same. And, you know, if we're, if we're choosing from the true self, which is the part of us that's unafraid, we'll continue to move, you know, I would say upward for lack of a better word or forward, perhaps. Sure. I do get that there's a collective shift happening. I've been getting this since the first book was dictated in 2009. You know, the, the, they said humanity is at a time of reckoning and a reckoning is a facing of oneself and all of one's creations. And they've been talking about this stuff in every book. And a lot of what they've talked about has pretty much come to pass. It's this strange reality we're in right now, which they still say is opportunity. It's great change, but it's also great opportunity. And they say, which gives me some hope that humanity as a whole has decided to, to go up to the next level, to ascend, to transform. You know, that that is a collective choice that's been made, but also because I get that we won't survive if we don't, mm -hmm. we'll kill each other, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they say, you know, the idea that we build bigger bombs to keep ourselves safe is, a, is ridiculous. If you think about it, yeah. they're meant to go off and eventually one day they will, unless we change the consciousness that we have and the consciousness that we have expects to be at war because we've always been at war. It's how we know ourselves. Mm, yeah. And it's, I'm a big believer and it's hard for me to say this, but I do believe in it. <clears throat> it's funny. It's hard for me to say, but I believe it. Like your, your reality is what is being portrayed from the inside, right? Like whatever's going on in the inside is your reality. And it's like, 
I'm starting to learn like when things get rough because they do, right? Like not everybody has, like you said, this per- perfect life. And, and especially depending on what industry you're in or what job you're in, things get hectic and things seem like the storm never passes. It's always over. You got this storm cloud following you wherever you go. But I'm starting to like not even acknowledging that it's this storm cloud. I'm just like, all right, it, it's just happening, just unfolding. And it, and the more that I kind of put labels on things, the more that I put things in boxes and the more that I try to, you know, organize the boxes and say, this is right or wrong. And I'm just kind of looking at it. Like I just have a rain cloud over me, man. And you know, it, it is life. It is, it is, it is a part of that. And I don't mm-hmm. know if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. Because like, I don't know. It's like the more that I look at things when they go wrong <clears throat> and say that they're wrong, the more that I feel like pain or the more that I feel frustrated or the more that I feel anger and the more that it causes stress and anxiety. And it it doesn't allow me to be the best father. doesn't allow me to be the best husband because now I'm taking out that, um, you know, that anxiety out on them or I'm, I'm being a little bit more, you know, less patient with them and their questions. So like the more that I just kind of look at life and accept it and just say, you know, I am this great being. I am one with source. I am, I am word. And the more that I just kind of look at things and, and as they unfold, appreciate it, there's a balance. There's like, there is a balance to life and like, just take it in and just be here in the moment and just kind of like, everything's good. Everything's where it needs to be. And the more that I do that, the more that I just kind of, like I said earlier, let go of that rope and just allow things to happen and and they just happen like i don't i can't even explain it and i know you talked about it before but like i just that's one thing that i wish my audience can get out of this conversation is like you don't have to try so hard to be something that you already are just sit back and kind of relax and just enjoy the ride i don't know if you can resonate with that totally you know i you know i'm an old 12 stepper you know and I, uh, I, I, I sort of got some confused sense in my 20s that my will wasn't a good thing. So and I just became passive. It was like, well, God will show me the way. But finally, I had to get up off my ass and do stuff. And that was when I started to learn and get some self-esteem and, 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 and things like that. But I don't feel... What I'm not feeling anymore is the need for approval. I mean, I, what, what, how, you know, what's the point? I mean, it's, it's, I, I think it's, we all want to be accepted. I think, you know, we all want to be cared for in our communities, whatever they may be. And I think that's fine, you know, but the idea that I'm supposed to be something I'm not has fallen away. And maybe because I'm saying, you know, this is all right, who I am now, you know, I'm not having to prove I am. When I was younger, you know, I had a lot of shame about not having succeeded in the way that I thought in the field that I had trained in. And, you know, I had a good life. I had a good life as an academic and I, you know, was able to support myself and, have friends and all those things. But what I didn't realize was that I was always operating in the supposition that I had failed or that I wasn't enough or that there was something that I was supposed to do that would make it all okay. And if anybody told me that I would have ended up channeling, you know, 10 books in 11 years that don't require any editing, I would have told them they were absolutely nuts because I couldn't have planned it. And because I couldn't have planned it, it's the one thing in my life that I didn't try to control. I just kept saying yes and showing up for the work. And then it was fine. You know, I tried not to make it about myself um, or about the money or about anything like that. Just show up and do the work. That's my job. You know, we all have these jobs that we do. And it is, makes for a much easier way of being in the world. It really does. Because, you know, it's not about competition and it's not about some perceived idea of success. I mean, one of the challenges with the law of attraction, 
teachings. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm just just in general. I'm not talking about anybody's in specific in particular. But you know, this idea that we're supposed to be getting stuff and that the universe is a catalog. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. We can learn through anything, but most of what people want is what they think that they're supposed to have in order to be okay in the world, you know, and it's bigger and better and shinier and more expensive. And I don't know that it works that way finally, you know, and I think we end up missing perhaps the beauty that's right before us, you know, and how remarkable you know, things can be when we're not saying, well, that's just not good enough and I need to be more, it needs to be more. But I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I, well, you know, I was I was wrapped up in that because it's like once you, once you get this idea, right, of the law of attraction and you try to implement it and, and things do manifest, like you'll, you know, there's some, there's certain teachers out there that teach you manifesting little things, but then you get caught up in that game of trying to say, all right, well, this is what I want. This is what I need to get this. If I don't get it, then there's something wrong with me or I'm not doing it right or whatever. And I don't, I don't know. I just think that, you know, the, the, the approach that, that you're talking about with like <sighs> the catalog stuff, like, I just feel like, we, we put too many labels on things. We put too many, we t- too much value on materialism. But the thing, the one thing that I did struggle with in my development was like, how do I live in this, in this a society? How do I live in this world that we're in? Like, because things are starting to turn me off. Like I, I can't have basic conversations with some people anymore. Like it doesn't suit me and it's, it's tough. And I would say, all right, I'm not going to, you know, go over there because I know they're just talking about blah, blah, blah. Or, and then then I was still like dividing myself. Like, even though like, you know, I was on the spiritual path, I was still keeping myself separate because I thought I was on the spiritual path and they were talking about things that I wanted to talk about. Now it's kind of like, I'm, I'm still on my spiritual path, but I'm still not where, you know, obviously I'm not anywhere. I'm just here. And so like now I can still go over there and have a conversation and just know it's like, it's just unfolding. It's just, it, it just is like, you know, like, cause I was like, I'm not watching sports anymore because blah, 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 blah. Cause it doesn't, it doesn't increase my conscious awareness or doesn't increase my spirituality. I'm not watching sports anymore. And then now I'm, <laughs> it's just funny how the path works because you, you think you got to figure it out and you just figure it out. It's the ego. And then all of, all of a sudden something happens and you just have this, Oh, I don't even know. I don't even want to call it an awakening. I just, it's like more of this realization to everything is just unfolding. It's not even like, it's not, it's, and it's all in divine timing. It's like, you can, like you said, you're throwing somebody who's hasn't seen light in like 10 years and throwing them into like a light filled room. It's going to blind the crap out of them. Same thing with my path is if you had told me the same things five, 10 years ago, I wouldn't have believed the word you were talking about. And then now I'm sitting back here and I'm like, just looking back on my path. I'm like, damn, like, it's just crazy how these, how, how this spirituality thing works. Yeah, it is, you know, and it gets crazier. I think, you know, I, I can't imagine it gets any more crazy because <sighs> I don't, what's so what's the next book called next book is called resurrection and it's out it'll be out i haven't turned it in but i just finished the dictation so the publisher will get it as soon as i finish have they said anything more? i mean look i don't want to be like hey is there more books but is there more books <laughs> more books i agreed well i agreed i the guides agreed and i agreed um to do another trilogy so resurrection is the first book of a trilogy and um, I think that'll probably be it. I hope, you know, I'm, they said after that, they would, they may still channel books, but they wouldn't be in this sequence that they've been doing and building. There's other things for them to teach as well. So this one is resurrection. I don't know what the two are after that. Um, this is a trippy book, resurrection. It came really fast. They did it over I think there were a total of maybe 35 days of sessions over six weeks. So mostly I was channeling almost every day. And um, 
they're going into this stuff that they haven't touched on in other books. So it's really about embodiment and what it means to sort of come from what they call the upper room and, and be present in your life. Some of it's kind of describing where you're at in this infinite now, you know, but they're also talking about what's possible there. Um, I'm just reading it now. You know, they said as part of a dictation, they were going to deliver the book fast to override my resistance to it. So I wouldn't have much time to question it, but I would do best to just read the book when it was done. So that's what I'm doing now. Um, but I've, you know, I have issues with all the books. You know, I don't write them, and, you know, but I talk them into being. So I'm a collaborator at that level. But, you know, my name's on the cover, but I didn't write them. So it's kind of weird. It's like yeah. having a surrogate child, I guess. Well, it's yours, but, you know. <laughs> Uh, but I mean, they're great. I mean, they're just, I just, you have such a gift there. I mean, to be able to channel this, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, this, these books are the, the message in them, you know, like, uh, I don't know how many times that I, that I read. Uh, I am word, right. It never really got the picture, you know, like, it's just the, the, like you said, the energy, there is a real energy behind these, these words and these pages. And I just, I, I enjoy having conversations with you and I enjoy reading your, in your, your work. And I just hope that, you know, more people find value in this because I think there is, I think that the, the collective consciousness, I think as, you know, as a society, as a global society, global consciousness, I, I'm excited for where we're headed. You know, mm -hmm. it might seem doom and gloom right now, just in the world of, you know, the events that are unfolding, but I think that that is, the, that is needed because of the change that's coming. I agree with you. So how can people find out more about you? Where can they um, find the new books? Um, my website has a lot of information. It's just my name, paulselig.com. You can get the books from any bookseller online or your local bookstore. They're Amazon, Inbound, Barnes & Noble. You can order it or through my website as well. Mm -hmm. And I do a lot of online stuff. So that's all on my website. Awesome. Paul, I can't thank you enough, brother. Like I love these conversations. I love your work, man. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I always enjoy it too. I really do. Mm -hmm.